Today we're covering the air element and how magical and it's truly powerful it can really be. Hi, my name is Rihanna and I am a traditional folk witch and pagan and today I'd like to talk to you about the elements, specifically the air element. If you've not seen my last video from last week, definitely check it out right here uh, where I talked all about the earth element and it was the very first in my series of elements that I'll be covering. Um, so definitely check that out there or down in the description below. Um, but yeah, today we're covering the air element and how magical and it's truly powerful it can really be. So the air element is a masculine element and it's very projecting energy. It is changing and it is very uh, mutable in nature. It's able to ebb and flow and constantly shift and change, which is why it's one of my most favorite elements. And it would have to be because I am mostly all air in my charge when it comes to my big three anyways. The air element is all about the mind, the intellect, and communication. It is about illumination and is about like higher knowledge and furthering oneself into higher realms. It's about uh, the higher self and travel, divination, and knowledge. So like always I'm going to be going over some of the few basics uh, that you need to know about the element and then I'm going to be diving into some basic rituals that you can do to actually practice with the element of air. Um, and it's not as hard as people like to make it seem. Everyone seems to think that because you can't physically touch, like grab it, grasp it and hold it, that you cannot work with it. But it's all around you, you're constantly touching it and constantly breathing it in. And it is all around you at all times. So really it's, in my opinion, the easiest element to work with. The cardinal direction of the element air is east and the season is spring. So we're actually coming into uh, spring very soon here if not with, if we're not already into it by the time this video is posted. And uh, it's the perfect time to start working with this element if you're into working with elements within their seasons. It's going to be really powerful. And then the time of day for the element of air is dusk. And then of course, day of the week is Wednesday. Now, the air element is my element. It's the majority of what my chart is made up of, of my big three. And it, I am a Gemini, as you all may know, and um, air rules Mercury. And Wednesdays. <laughs> Wednesdays is Mercury day, and that day is all about communication, on how you communicate with others, with how you express yourself to the world. It's about higher knowledge and learning and growing, and it's about um, seeking knowledge. So even into the occult practices, learning occult practices and secret, seeking out things that are unknown. Um, it's about foresight and divination. Now let's go into some basic color correspondences. I find that I work on a bit of a sliding scale when it comes to colors. Some people say just one color and done. Um, each element has its own basic colors that they're assigned and that's it. However, I like to work in a spectrum of types of colors. So for example, when I'm working with sun elements, I work with yellow, I work with gold, red, oranges and all of the shades in between depending on what I'm trying to work because not every working that you're trying to achieve is going to have the exact um, correspondence to say a red candle or an orange candle you know that might not work with how you correspond things or associate things so for me I work with all the shades in between in that area now, unfortunately, blue is already taken from the water element, so um, it was actually assigned to be yellow, which makes sense because of dusk, uh, as the sun sets, um, becomes very yellow and it becomes like the, the glamour hour at dusk where 
you just all become golden. So I can understand why yellow was chosen. Um, however, you can work with blue if you want to. If you want to work with like dark blue for the water element and a light blue or a pastel blue for the air element, that's totally fine. You can adjust things and make things work for you however you see fit. So I would assign blue, yellow, uh, pastel blue, gray, and white to the element of air. The astrological signs for the elements of air are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Now I am both Gemini, Gemini, and Libra, so I understand this very, very well. And I actually get along most well with other Geminis or other Aquarius people. Um, I've not yet met another Libra, but I'm sure um, I would get along with them a lot easier than I do with other um, astrological chart people um, but I think it's because we understand each other at a certain different type of like frequency if that makes sense so like Gemini's for example our minds are always on the go so um, that's just like a little side tangent there some of the physical representations that you can use to represent the air element on your altar are as follows there is the feather the athame the wand the staff and incense However, I've known people to use even like a jar that's empty that contains air because it's open um, as a marker for the element of air and that's totally okay. They mark a sigil on it or a symbol that represent, represents air and it's a very minimal way of working with the elements as a representation. You could also use candles. I know um, practicing pagans that actually use a candle for each and every one of the elements and just use symbols. Um, and herbs that are representative of, of that element and they like the candle for each of the elements. Um, so you can kind of make this work for you in whichever way. So there are also the elemental spirits of this element. The main one that is assigned to the element is the self. However, there are different other elemental beings that also fall under the category of air beings. So there are things like fae. Not all fae are air beings, but there are many fae that are, as well as angels, sylphons, um, which are like a cloud being, are all air beings. So definitely look into that if that's something that calls to you and see what works for you. Next is crystals, one of my more favorite things to work with. Um, so there are so many and I'm just going to list off a few that I associate with but feel free of course like always to build your own associations with your correspondences. Um, you know this might just give you a jumping off point to look into certain things and think hey I didn't think of this crystal as being an air element. Let's look into this one and see if that's also something that might correspond for my specific situation. Quartz is basically a universal stone. Clear quartz can be used in all elements, especially earth. Um, and of course you can argue a lot of these can be argued for earth or whatever, um, even especially the herbs, but there are some elements that are more suited to this element, like I say in my last video. So quartz or clear quartz, amethyst, and aventurine are all crystals that um, really work with air element. When you think about your higher self, the higher senses connecting to your higher being, um, the amethyst is a perfect stone for that. It actually works with the crown chakra and it helps you it helps you develop psychic senses and abilities and help attune to the higher planes. So that is a perfect one in my books. There's also azurite, blue, chalcedony, and celestite. Also hagstones. Now hagstones are also a water element, but they are also a air element. So they are known to, um, when you look through the hole of the hagstone, there is basically a world between worlds. That is what we call looking at the in-between, uh, between here on earth in this realm and the other planes. So the spaces in between all contain air and a space. So that is also another element for air. 
There's also Jade, Malachite, and Jasper. The metals that correspond with this element are tin and copper. Now you could argue for planets, any large bodied like gas giant would be a planet for this element. However, there are three that I really associate with it, um, those being Venus, Jupiter, and Mercury. Now for the herbs, this is also one of my more favorite subjects because it's something that I use very heavily within my own practice. Air is actually very well associated with blossoms. Now you can't see it, but this is actually where I, why I'm wearing my blossomed shirt today. Um, and I'm actually wearing my butterfly clips. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to match the video today in correspondence. So yeah, petals and blossoms all very much correspond with the element of air. There's also alimony, bergamot, and anise are all excellent herbs for this element. Uh, anise is actually very a very psychic herb. It really helps to connect you to your psychic senses and divination, and I use it actually in a divination pattern of mine as a incense. There's also bluebells, all citrus fruits, and dandelions, parsley, peppermint, mint, primrose and vervain and a lot of resin so benzoin frankincense myrrh they're all very associated with air element very much because um, they can be used as an incense of course so they are a resin they can be burned and associated with the other elements of air to help take our prayers or petitions up to the ethers up to spirit now animals that are in association with this element are of course ones that well fly and that would be things like bees um, other small flying insects birds bats and butterflies um, all things that can like get themselves up into flight are something that would correspond to this element and funny enough is actually spiders they actually fly through the air on their silk web from place to place. So also spiders correspond with the element of air. You can work with the element of air with its all chemical symbol, which is right here. And this can be used in sigils. Um, it could be put onto candles or into sachets or whatever you really want. Um, you can inscribe it onto altars or into spaces. And symbols are a really versatile way to work with any element very specifically, um, but this is really good too if you just want to like etch onto a piece of tile the elemental alchemical symbols and just have them out on your altar when you need to work with them or you want to represent them in the space. And then the fun part is what are the type of rituals or workings that you can do to work with the elements of the air? What can you physically do to work with it? Well, for me, one of my more favorite things to do is actually to do breath work. And a lot of people really don't credit breath work as being such a powerful working. This is something where you're breathing in air every day. Um, and no one really thinks to sit down and focus on your breath, and which is why I find meditation so helpful for me. It really helps me to connect back to my breath and back grounding into myself. Um, you can use breath work to even trip and um, come into altered states of, of consciousness and um, it's a super powerful tool. You can also use like alternated breathing um, to help get rid of headaches. So it's a really powerful tool both physically, mentally, and spiritually. You can actually cleanse with the element of air. So I like to do this when it's a really windy day, especially here in the prairies where we get high high winds i like to go outside and just imagine all that gunk like just being pulled off of me and thrown off um this is something that you can really do um if you want to have something to move away from you forever so if you want to get rid of negative energy um you can just imagine it just cleansing you as if a smoke bundle would um however you're just using the wind you can work with the air elements by actually having a ethereal altar. So this is something I've spoken about I think in one other video where um, especially if you are a closeted practitioner and you can't have a physical space that's an altar, you can actually set up a meditated um, astral planes 
like altar that's in your mind's eye and visit that whenever you need to when you have a private moment and you're able to sit alone in meditation this is something really powerful where you can have it very specifically just to the element of air if you'd like um, or you can have it as your main working altar in your mind's eye also there's smoke blends so of course you can use smoke blends for an earth element or for really anything um, depending on the herbs that are used you can basically use an, a bundle for abundance to even attracting love so it really doesn't matter what you're like focusing on it really just depends on your main intent when I think about the element of air I also think about divination and foresight so doing divination of any sort can really help to um, connect to that element even more so if you're using something that involves the air or the ethers. So I actually like to uh, divine through the clouds. Um, so that's something that you can do as well. And that is um, where you are looking for images or messages through the clouds and the changing of the shapes. And it's a really easy thing to do. And most of the time, nobody's going to know what you're doing. They're just going to think you're like enjoying the day and appreciating the sites that you have in front of you. You can also use things like smell association. This is something that I use quite a lot in my oils where I correspond a certain scent to a certain outcome or emotional feeling that I want to have that will help me readjust my mindset or help me refocus into what I'm doing. So for example, I have in my gold digger oil that I created, I have chamomile and lavender in here and I also have lemongrass which really helps me to focus in on my intent and reinvigorate me when I'm tired so it really helps me to stay focused on my goals. If you're interested in learning how to use the elements to help manifest your dreams and desires, definitely check out this playlist here where I talk about the elements more in depth. I go on an ongoing series here and I will see you all in my next video. Much love, stay wicked, and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. Bye!